Today you're going to be doing number eight off of your menu here for chapter 2C. And this lab is going to be very similar to the one that you did last week when you were identifying different carbohydrates. Uh, but this one's a little bit easier. Uh, it's going to be easier because you kind of know what you're doing because you've already done it. Uh, plus the questions are nowhere near as difficult as they were on the last lab. All right. Now I want to remind you though that tomorrow you guys have a quiz over menus 2B and 2C, so last week and this week. Uh, you have a study guide that you picked up as you walked in the door. Uh, you're not going to turn the study guide into me. It's simply there to help you prepare for tomorrow's quiz. Uh, you're going to have about, eh, I think, 15 multiple choice questions. And the rest are going to be short answers that are based directly on the study guide. So make sure you give that a nice look over. Okay, This lab's due Monday. The homework layer is also due tomorrow, so don't mess that up. Plus, tonight at 11.55 p.m., that re review layer is also due, so do not mess that up. All right, so let's begin. First of all, we want to review what an amino acid and a protein is. Now remember, an amino acid is the monomer of a protein. Amino acids, just like what we drew on uh, the whiteboard squares on Tuesday, amino acids can be joined together to form dipeptides, which have two amino acids joined together, or they can be a polypeptide, which is three or more amino acids joined together. And each amino acid is joined together by a peptide bond. So if you have two amino acids joined together, there's going to be one peptide bond. And if you have three amino acids joined together, there's gonna to be two peptide bonds that join that. So think about it. There's always one less peptide bond compared to the number of amino acids that are in there. A protein shape is really, really important. Remember, shape uh, determines the functions. Remember Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect? Form follows function. And the shape of a protein is going to be determined by its amino acid sequence. And remember, that's known as your primary structure. Remember from episode three on the videos, secondary structure is a coil or a fold. Tertiary structure and quaternary structure those are the three-dimensional ones, and that's when the functions really join in. But remember, the primary structure determines secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. All right, so what's this lab about? We have seven substances. Three of them are known. Well, actually, we know the names of all of these substances. Three of them, we know exactly what's going to happen in each test. Uh, the other three that we're really testing... Um, we want to find out what's in those. And then the seventh one is water, which we use as a negative control. Okay, each, or each substance is going to go through four separate chemical tests. And the goal or the learning target of this is we're going to determine if albumin, which is egg whites, casein, which is a type of protein that's found in milk, and gelatin, which is found in jello, we want to find out if they are A, Poly, uh, polypeptides, I almost said polysaccharide, but if they're polypeptides. And we also want to find out if they contain three particular amino acids, tyrosine, cytosine, and arginine. So one of the tests is going to be able to tell if it's a polypeptide, and the other three tests are going to deal with each of these individual um, amino acids. Okay, the first test you're going to do is called the biuret test. Um, think of the Benedict solution, the Barfoet solution like we had last week. This is a copper sulfate type of test, so it's going to be the typical blues you can see here on the picture. Um, when you have a positive test with biuret, that means that that protein is a polypeptide, and a positive test is purple. So as you can see down here on these guys, those are a positive test for um, polypeptides. So you should expect three positive tests. I'm not going to tell you which one they are. Just remember, there's going to be three. Second test we do is called a xanthroprotetic or xanthroproteic. It's probably the correct pronunciation. This one tests for the presence of an amino acid called tyrosine. If the amino acid is present, the positive test will also be yellow, as you see in this picture. Um, this test is a little bit more difficult. We're going to use a hot water bath like we used last week on some of them. Um, but there are a couple of precautions because some of the stuff is a little nasty. <clears throat> We're going to be working with bleach, which is also known as sodium hypochlorite. You can see that down here in, on the left side of the screen. Uh, and we're also going to be dealing with nitric acid, which is in the white bag. Now, when nitric acid can get, mess, 
get mixed in with the bleach, it can create chlorine gas, which is poisonous. Think World War II and those poison gas attacks. Now, the bleach is in the waste container, because we put that earlier. So when we rinse out these uh, test tubes with the nitric acid, we need to make sure that we're using some water to help rinse it out so that that bleach is a little bit dilute. If your bleach is not dilute, it will start bubbling, and that bubbles our chlorine gas. So if that happens to you and you mess this up, which you will not, but in case you do, please put that inside that exhaust hood, which is right next to your, uh, your lab station. Everything will be fine there. Toss some water in there, dilute it, and you'll be okay. All right. The next one is the Sakaguchi test. Uh, this one will test for the amino acid called arginine. Positive test will give you the red color as you see up here in this test tube. Uh, we're gonna be using these three fluids. So when you follow directions, you'll see these. Sodium hydroxide, which is a base. Uh, alpha naphthenol, uh, think of naphthalene, which is used in paint thinner. So you may have a little paint thinner smell when you get to this stuff. Think of maybe uh, mothballs are kind of made out of the same stuff. And of course, sodium hypochlorite, which is also known as bleach. Okay, so just follow your directions on that. If all goes well, you may see one or two of these test tubes with the red. A nitroprusside test is going to test for the amino acid cysteine. A positive test will give you a purple or brown. As you can see over here in the picture, we have three of the negative uh, tests, and the one that is positive is kind of a, a dark purpley brown, just like you see here. The unique thing about cysteine is it has sulfur in its R group. Now, there's a couple of very, very important precautions with this step. Um, you need to use the exhaust hood for this, so you'll actually find the sodium nitroferrocyanide. Remember, it's got cyanide in that, very poisonous. It messes up the ATP, AD, ADP pathway. Uh, so we're going to do this test inside this exhaust hood. Um, and as you can see, this picture up here above with the positive test, those were actually taken inside the exhaust hood. So a positive test will be purple or brown. Excuse me. All right, now when we're all done with this lab, you should get this done within this period, no problem. We have some important cleanup because you are the last kids of the day. That waste container, uh, make sure you, you can just pour that down the sink. Um, make sure you use lots and lots of water to flush it down through here. All the solutions that were being tested, uh, the casein, the albumin, the tyrosine, the cysteine, you can pour that down the sink, rinse out those bottles because we're going to reuse those later in the year for something else. Um, the test tubes that we use, rinse those out like you did last week with the, tube, with the uh, test tube brush and put them upside down so they will dry. Any pipettes that we use, throw those away just like we always do. Now the boiling stones that are in your beaker of water that was boiling, uh, just let them stay in there. Uh, you're going to let that water cool down and then later uh, after school is out, I'll come back and I'll take care of those. So don't throw the boiling stones away and do not pour that stuff down the sink. Uh, the testing chemicals, which would be the bleach, the sodium hydroxide, the uh, nitroferrocyanide, leave those as they are. We're going to just put those away in a cupboard so we can use those again next year. Remember, the safety glasses and uh, the aprons that you are wearing, make sure you put those away properly, and especially those aprons. Fold those things up and put them away. I don't see a bunch of the, the white tie-behind cords hanging out of that cabinet. Put them away nice and neat, actually nicer and neater than how you found them. And then finally, uh, let's put our uh, chairs up and let's make sure the computer monitors and uh, CPUs are all turned off. Okay, now don't forget, labs are due Monday, homework layer is due Friday, quiz on Friday, use that study guide to help you, and the review layer will close tonight. Okay, I will see you tomorrow on your test. Um, so. Until the next lab, we're going to catch you on the flip side.